welcome to what is probably your first roll down meeting. It's not unlike a lot of meetings you've been to. Um, and it's one of eight that uh, are going to happen in this room today and tomorrow. <coughs> if you're worried about that video camera, it's only because there are a number of people away at this moment in time. And we don't want to have to do this again next week and the week after. So we're going to film it and uh, <coughs> let them watch it when they get back. The purpose of the meeting then is best summarised on this agenda. I'll say a few words about the purpose, a little bit about the background. I'll introduce you to the United Research Group. We'll get a report on the pilot phase in Bristol. We'll talk about phase two quite a lot because that's the purpose of uh, this project. And at the end, we'll perhaps discuss the benefits that uh, we think we will derive from it and any concerns that you may have. And also, there'll be a question session after that. Right then, the purpose. First of all, to, to brief our stuff, you've read about the, the project in impact and in, in general. You've heard about it in team briefing and you've been to some staff meetings in this very room concerning the, the reorganisation. To help us through that, process of reorganisation, we have a core team. I made that alteration this morning in the first meeting <coughs> because the core team I'm going to introduce to you is very much our team. They are dedicated to the Manchester effort. We are not working for them. We are working with them and they are working very much with us. There are, in fact, two members of the team missing, and they're both ladies. One we hope will be with us this afternoon, Carol Smith, and one will return from holiday and be here next Monday, Margaret Testo. The team is made up of uh, URG members and Eagle Star staff, and to protect the innocent, I won't tell you which of these people are <laughs> Eagle Star staff. I want you to find out over the next few weeks I want you to meet with them and talk with them and find out who they are and what they are and what they do. First person on my right is Ronan O'Neill, who is the leader of the, the core team. On his right, Mike Chorley. On his right, Colin Bayliss. And the last of today's quartet, Hans Peter von Siskard. Seeker. Seeker, I think, well, got it wrong. Uh, he nearly gave away then <laughs> which arm of the core thing he was. But right, what's going to happen? Well, that really does depend very much on you. What we'd like to happen is that in the 12 week time span that this project runs, that we achieve everything that we need to achieve to affect the change. These people are quite good at what they do. They're very good at change. They know a lot about the processes in Bristol. But they know absolutely nothing about Manchester. All they will ever find out about Manchester is what we tell them. And it's very much in our interest to make sure that we tell them everything about Manchester so that at the end of the process, what evolves as being the best methods serve our best purposes. It's very much a two-way communication process. They will amplify this in, in just a moment. It will happen in lots of different ways, but principally it will happen through the collective efforts of staff who are formed into natural work teams. 
I understand there are going to be four natural rope things, one in each department. And in each department there will be a departmental coordinator. Those have already been chosen, and to save the question at the end, I'll tell you who they are now. In the commercial department, Sheila Vickers. In the claims department, Simon Unwin. In the accounts department, it's Wendy Jones. And in the personal department, it's Gary Langham. They are going to be trained by the core team, and they will be, if you like, the focal point of the efforts in each department. But more about that in, in a moment. In addition to that, there's going to be some increased management training conducted by the core team off-site. In fact, our training is going to be done in Chester, and that will involve all of the supervisory and management staff uh, at Manchester. By way of background to this, you would have read in the various publications and heard in team briefing that when the divisional board decided on their reorganisation, they needed to recruit specialists. And I can tell you they recruited the best. URG are the best in their field, there is no question of that. And we should consider ourselves fortunate that we have the biggest chunk of the, in numbers terms, let me hasten to add, the biggest number uh, of core team dedicated so far. There are, in fact, six of them. In terms of the payback to all of this, in terms of what is, is being achieved, the divisional board have issued a statement. And I think most of you have already seen this. It's called the General Division Vision. And I'll just give you a couple of minutes to reread it again. <clears throat> I'd like particularly to draw your, to, to your attention to the phrase in line four distinctive quality. What that means is being the best at everything we do, but principally being the best in the marketplace, making sure our service is the best, that people come to us because we are the best. And these changes that are going to happen in Manchester will make the process to achieve this vision. We cannot do it uh, by ourselves. We need help. Uh, but we can make it happen collectively. And to use a, uh, an Americanism, uh, let's go for it. Ronan O'Neill. Thank you, Charles. Good morning. The name United Research is probably relatively new to most of you. You have come across it in some of the communications that have come out in the, in the magazine, so I'd just like to tell you a little bit about the background. I'm doing it now because I think for the end of 12 weeks here, you'll not be able to tell the difference between us, you, or the old core team members. I hope that we all blend in that well together. United Research is a, as you gather from the accents of some of the, the members, is an American, original, originally American company. And we've got particular emphasis in the, in the, the way we work and the people that we work with. Charles very kindly called us the best, and we are at what we do. But we only work with the best. Our role is to improve the best, make them better. That's pretty key here. It's, it's, it's one of the exciting things about getting into Eagle Star, and particularly into Manchester, to have this opportunity to work with people of this caliber and improve both ourselves as we grow the organization together. You know, I do research, came into the UK about a year ago, and that time we've had a tremendous explosion of growth in the company and we've picked up some of the very large companies uh, in the UK including one in the financial services sector so we have some relevance if you like to financial services here. That growth, that uh, explosive development of the company here has been very significant and it says something about the, the methods that we use and the type of customers that we work with. We have a total group of about 380 people in the world, 
and already in the UK there are 75 professional people. They're building on a background experience of 29 years managing change. Change doesn't come about just by accident, it's the result of a vision of somebody's view of strategy which is going to improve their organisation and develop their corporation. We've seen the statement from Eagle Star and United Research has been brought in to assist to facilitate getting that vision operating. That's a very dynamic process, it's a tremendous challenge for us. How we're going to implement it, how we're going to get those things moving is by using combinations, strategy and people linked by a technology will allow us to work on the organizational development. Linking systems and people, we can work management and skills development. And similarly, with particular relevance to your market and your business, strategy through technology will work with systems to allow systems development. That's a very deliberate structure that design has been done that way to show a triangle. We manage change and change goes through the exciting phases of getting it moving and a stable phase when you test if it works. That's a very strong and stable structure. Take any way, away any one piece of it, it'll fall down. United Research specializes in bringing all those together, combining them and focusing them on the aims which you, as Eagle Star, have stated. A key point, and one that I particularly feel is worth stressing, is that we're implementators. We do not make reports and hand you a beautiful document and strategy which says, over the next six months, you should do this and this and this. And we go away and say, thank you very much. It was a nice fee, and we'll spend it. We're going to work together with you it's easy to make recommendations. We want to work as a complete team, take the recommendations and put them in, get them moving and working. That's our role. As I said at the very beginning, I anticipate and I expect that with your cooperation that you don't see us as URG after a few weeks. We're your core, core team, Eagle Star Manchester. I'm gonna pass you over to Colin Bayless who'll talk us through the work that was done in the pilot phase and I know Colin will, will be stressing that that activity has now got to be tailored and focused onto Manchester. You have to give us the inputs to make it relevant to you. Colin. As Ronan said, I'm here to talk about the pilot phase and then on to how it applies to us. A bit of background first. URG came along last July and did analysis for Eagle Star in Birmingham and in Bristol. And they identified various areas of opportunity that we needed to address to make ourselves further market leaders. The pilot was then set up to test and to work out how to bring those changes into action. And then what we need to do is take what the pilot in the southwest has worked and work that through to make it really meaningful for the rest of the country. The objectives then of the whole reorganisation effort that we started in the pilot were these. We have got to make the physical change. We are going to become personal and commercial branches, so we have to make that change. We want to strengthen the organisation structure. We've had many, many lines of referral going through. We want to make that simpler and easier to work. And we've already had a presentation telling us about that in March, and the beginnings of that is slowly coming out into action. We need to help our man managers to hone their skills, become better man managers. Now, picking up from the questions before, I found out that we've done a lot of work on management skills here at Manchester beforehand and that's super news to hear. There was nevertheless a very strong need for the whole of the country to have man management. On average it was discovered that people have had about two days management training over the past three years. So therefore there is a need and 
this immediately illustrates how this is the need that was discovered in the southwest, which we now need to tailor to make meaningful for Manchester. Nevertheless, on this management training, I feel we're further ahead than the rest of the country, so we can take that as a almost like a trampoline and go even further than the rest of the field. This is why the, the five of us, because Carol is on management skills, the five of us are specifically here to streamline the process and workflows. We spent a lot of time in the Southwest working this, but we want to really make sure this makes sense. We want to work this and make it work for Manchester. And that's why we need all of us here to validate what we've done before, to really make it meaningful, and let's make it work for Manchester. We want to improve the management reporting and decision making by providing the tools so we know what's happening and we can make decisions accordingly. And we want to make better use of ourselves. None of us want to do a bad job. We all of us want to go home at the end of the day being satisfied with what we've done. And we want to try and make that happen. pilot phase then specifically addressed these main areas. As I mentioned, we looked at where high productivity workflows and processes were held in each of the departments. By high productivity we mean a lot of time spent <coughs> and also where, where a high volume goes through the department, where we spend a lot of time. We spent time looking at the new job levels and as I said, we've heard a bit about that already presentations in March. Implementation teams were set up immediately and also implementation teams were set up in Manchester, Liverpool to plan the physical changes required. Let's spend a bit more time planning the physical changes this year than we did last year and we can make it work through a lot more, a lot smoother. To build up a plan to train in basic management and supervisory skills to help us all to plan the transition process and then to get stuck in. So we spent six months, just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the results that we achieved in the Southwest Cluster. And what I'd like us to do is take these results and build on more results because we really feel that what we've learnt already from being here in Manchester and the vibrations we get back from these meetings is that we can really accomplish something incredibly meaningful in the time we're here. But so far, we've clarified and passed down accountability to the right levels. So we are working the jobs that we know we can work, and we're told so, so we know how to work it. Working towards customer orientation. We spent a lot of time in something called focus groups, and a focus group was going to the broker and saying, Mr. Agent, what would you like us to do? And then working towards that aim. So let's have a customer orientation instead of just inwardly looking. Across the board working at the right level. So that was recognised there was a need in the southwest, and we started working towards that in a lot more detail. And again, we provided the basis for improved service because we want to be the best. Just a quick summary of the progress so far. We did finish on the schedule we promised and I think there was a lot of doubt as to whether we would when we saw the scale of the project in 1st November. We finished by the end of May as we promised. What we then spent was a whole month planning how to go through this 12 week process which means that we feel even more comfortable with managing the change because we've got new Eagle Star team. We trebled the size of the Eagle Star contingent to be able to make this happen. Nevertheless, we need the technical input so you can tell us how it works at Manchester and we can make the model we've got really meaningful. We implemented the changes and we are still watching what will happen. By the fact we're still watching what will happen means that we can affect the Southwest when we discover something, we can feed it back to the Southwest and help the Southwest improve even more. So this
this is for us. This is the, the 12 weeks that we're here that we're talking about now and how to achieve something absolutely so important for the company throughout this time. The key that I've been mentioning is down at the bottom there. The improved service is what we want. Um, we mentioned before that Eagle Star is the best, but we know we're the best of a pretty average bunch. If we can improve our service, it will set us even further ahead than the market and will give us that competitive edge that was mentioned in that Division Board statement, the vision. So what we want to do is we want to prepare all five branches for a successful conversion, a seamless conversion that nobody notices between an existing composite branch and a commercial stroke personal branch. The reason we put five there is because we're, we are including Leeds twice. So it's Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, Leeds Financial Insurance Branch and Newcastle. To achieve the improved service, we're going to be concentrating in these five areas. I've mentioned the management and supervisory training, which will be continued through the 12 weeks while we're here. We are going to be concentrating most of our time on the improved workflows. How to make life easier for us. How to not get lost in all the paperwork of going here, there and everywhere, that is just confusing how to do our job. How to make the job simpler. Management reporting helping us to make the right decisions, working towards our broker, and then finally throwing the switch. That, just in graphic form, is the plan. And you can see the five locations that we'll be working through here. And just to explain, you'll see that phase three actually starts towards the end of phase two. So we've got a limited time to make an impact here before we go on to phase three to re and pass on what we've learned here. So we've got a concentrated time, but we can achieve a lot in that time available. Dates for the diary then. We arrived yesterday, super welcome, began to really get to know everybody here and we begin to appreciate what we need to do to overcome the initial inertia and let's start really working together. Staff roll down meetings, we're already in the process of these now. We then want to get to know you, we want to set up natural work teams so you can tell us how you do things. We've been told quite a lot and quite rightly so that things are different in Manchester and that's perfectly fair. Here is the opportunity for you to start to tell us how different it is. So the work that we've done so far in the southwest, we can tailor that to meet Manchester's needs. We are not imposing a model. If we wanted to impose a model, we could almost send a memo saying, do this, but we're not. We want to come and to talk to find out how to make this meaningful for Manchester. So we're saving all of us time. After we've spent this time, middle of August, is when we start implementing. And by the end of September, the core team will say thank you. And hopefully you are, you don't need us by then, because we've taught you how to manage change, and you're managing change by yourself, and the core team is redundant. So how are we going to make this happen? It involves a lot of people, a lot of people. The vital part behind this is communications. We've got to be able to talk to one another. Charles emphasised those two points and I'd like to really endorse that. We have done a certain amount of work but we need your input. We need you to tell us how to do things better. We need you to tell us what we've got isn't right for Manchester and how to make it right for Manchester. We started the communication so you can get to know us, you can see our faces, but it's more than that. We want you to come see us. We're down on the ground floor by Roy Linder's office. We're calling it the bunker room. The door is always going to be open. We have no secrets. Please make the effort to come down and see us and talk to us and find out what's happening and 
get your penny worth in, please let us know. Likewise, we're going to be out in the departments a fair bit. Stop us as we're going. Find out what's happening. And we're only too pleased to share everything we've got. It's a very American phrase, but it's quite meaningful. It's not telling, it's sharing something together. Two-way process. The natural work team member is going to be absolutely key to this communication because we'll be spending the most time with the natural work team member and so it's great for you to stop that person and tell that person to pass it back to us. And this is the type of person that we need. Uh, remember this slide is also being shown in Newcastle, Leeds. <coughs> uh, we've learned that we're well along the way here. We've uh, managed to change very well indeed at Manchester over the past few years. And we've got some people whose skills are well honed down like this. But just to summarize again, we don't know the process. We know how to manage change, but we don't know the process in Manchester, exactly as Charles said at the start. We need your technical input to tell us how the work's being done. But we've got to have you open to new ideas. New approaches are going to be presented for you. We need somebody who's willing to listen, to think. We want somebody who wants to do the job better. We all do. We're not going to be 100% sure of everything we're going to try, but let's try it and see what, how it goes and monitor and make the changes when we see it's the right thing or change it if it's not. And teamwork is vital. We want somebody who shares the credit among the team, helping where it's needed to be. It's intensive for a little while, but the rewards more than offset the time that's invested. And this, I really do know, we've been stretching for a long time here at Manchester, so we've got people who are willing to stretch to expand, and that's great to know. So who do we need? We need all of you, every single member here. Now, we're not going to be able to get every single member into a natural work team, so we need you to put your input to, into that natural work team to make the team as valuable as possible. And we don't want just the most experienced people in the department. We want people who are new to the department as well. We want the experience and we want the, the young blood. Now, young blood doesn't necessarily mean age, but somebody who can come into the company and can look at it with fresh eyes. So experience and new ideas. This is how it's going to happen. It's not a lot of time, so we're going to have to be very focused as we work this. But you can see, three weeks at the start of the process, so we can find out what's happening in Manchester. So we've got a decent amount of time for you to tell us how things are different in Manchester through the natural work teams. We want to prepare a process telling us how things are done here. And we then want you to validate that. We want you to look at it and say, yes, that is what happens here at Manchester. Then we're looking to start talking about what we've created so far in the South West and how to tailor that to make it meaningful for Manchester. After that, we want to implement in what we're calling a lead group. Now, a lead group is one section in each department, and they will be implementing the process carefully. We don't want to run in like a bull at the gate, but we want to implement the new process tailored to Manchester's needs carefully so we can modify it and make it pure. And then we we'll start, can start preparing to go branch wide. We'll then go branch wide. Two weeks we feel that will take. Then we've got a month, a clear month, for us to help to make sure that the process is pure. By that we, we mean that we haven't got two sections operating slightly different process. We want to have the same process here. We also want to pass on any ideas we have to not only Leeds, but back down to the southwest as well. We want to try as much as possible to get the best process across the country but tailored to the individual location's needs. So we're spending a fair bit of time working that, but it's got to be tailored so it's right. 
That is the 12-week plan. It's a short time, but by concentrating our minds, we're sure we can achieve something extremely valuable here. What I'd like to now do is 